Came okay, earlier, we were talking a little bit about counter tracking measures that we can employ, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity, since we do have some snow still back out here, to come back out and continue this conversation. In this video, we're going to talk about some basic principles of counter tracking. We're going to talk about some of that story, some of the operational variables, and then we'll demonstrate a few things along the way as well. Man, if this is something that you're into, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and make sure that you leave some comments down below based off of your experience and things that you've picked up along the way. Appreciate you guys. So a couple basic principles and, uh, and theories on counter tracking operations. The first one is we need to understand that we're never going to get rid of all the sign. We are in fact going to leave some sign and that leaving that sign is telling a story to somebody who may be tracking us. And so we need to pause there and we need to ask ourselves some questions because why you're being tracked is an important part of that scenario, that situation. And that situation is going to dictate everything and is going to include things like the tracking party as well as other operational variables that we'll define later. So who is tracking you? How big is that party? What is, is their experience? What is their training, whether it's civilian or military? What kind of capabilities do they have? What do they know about you and your capabilities? Once I can begin to assess this, then I can begin to define what I'm going to do because different people are going to naturally employ some different measures. And I can use this knowledge about them and what they know about me to my advantage in order to help deceive that tracking party. So one of the first things we need to know and understand is how much time, space, and distance there is between us and that tracking party. I want as much space and distance as I can, and so I'll deploy a few different things in order to help gain some distancing, gain some time, if that makes sense. I want to be moving at a decent speed, but I don't necessarily want to be running because running and moving and rushing is going to naturally leave more sign for people to leave. Now, what kinds of signs are there? There are ground sign or ground spore, and that's anything that's below the knee, and then there's high sign, and that's anything above the knee. With both, you have temporary and permanent. Temporary sign is going to be something that's going to dissipate quickly, whereas a permanent sign may take a much longer time, if at all, to dissipate, to fade away. We have prints, stains, and we have other types of signs that are out there that we'll break it down in a future video. But I need to have some of this basic understanding and knowledge in order to employ some counter tracking measures. Now, some of those other operational variables that we're going to have, again, we're, we need to understand our mission, the enemy, the train, the troops, the time, and the civil considerations, right? Met TC. I know that you've heard this before. So what is the purpose for our movement right now? What do we know about the people that are tracking us? How much time do we have? What is my knowledge of the terrain? When it comes to the terrain, I want to think about the size, the sh slope, the shape, the orientation, and the elevation. I want to understand how I can use those natural and man-made features to my advantage, whether we're talking about hills, valleys, saddles, ridges, depressions, cliffs, roads, buildings, and structures, all of which can be used to my advantage when I'm trying to evade a pursuer. Based off of how much time and space I have between us and that tracking party, is going to help dictate things like the paths that I take. Now, a well-used path is beneficial because I can increase my speed. If I'm moving down a road, which is a linear danger area, which I, I typically may want to avoid, except when it's being done intentionally in order to gain some speed and distance from that tracking party, right? I don't have to be as concerned about leaving sign on a road or a well-beaten path. And a least used trail is going to be beneficial because I can slow down 
and I can walk through areas that a tracker may not ordinarily expect somebody to go through. And if I'm being very deliberate in my steps, then I can be more elusive. The problem with using a least used route is it's going to be a lot slower because I do need to slow down my speed and pay much more attention to detail. Now we're gonna go ahead and take it to some snow real quick. And we're gonna demonstrate uh, one of the most commonly talked about counter tracking measures. Looking out uh, right here in front of us, we have a, a nice patch of snow that's not been touched. And what people like to think and talk about doing is being able to backtrack. So when we're talking about backtracking, what we're saying is we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk forward a certain distance and then we're going to backtrack, walking backwards on our own path. But as you can see, man, it is not that easy. And when you take a closer look at it, you can tell that somebody was walking backwards. And that's the good thing about coming out and practicing in something like snow or sand, is you can help to master your craft at what we're talking about. Right, and so depending on the soil type that you're walking on, it can be a good measure. But if you're moving through soft sand, you need to be very cautious and take shorter steps in order to help mitigate some of the risks of being caught in what you're trying to do. Another tactic that we can employ is gonna be called the button hook. To understand the button hook, what we're basically gonna to try to do is, is loop around and set up an observation post. In this case, I could walk down this trail intentionally coming out from the woods, walk down this trail, leaving sign and spore, and then hit that wood line and come all the way back around until I'm on the opposing side. And then I can stop and set up an observation post. Maybe I'm gonna use this as a hasty ambush site, or maybe I'm just gonna use it to gather information about the people who are tracking me, which is their size and capability. And then at that point, I can decide if I need to close the button hook and work my way back out the way I came or deploy additional measures. Right, one of the other things that's often talked about is brushing over your track and if you're doing it intentionally, that's one thing, but I think we're fooling ourselves if we think that brushing out our footprints is gonna leave no sign. You are leaving a sign. It looks like brushed out footprints. Again, whether we're talking about on the sand or out in the snow. Now, if you had left some imprints or impressions that you need to erase, maybe you're setting up some kind of a sand table, maybe it was a buttstock that went into the ground and you wanna brush that off, by all means. But don't think that brushing out your footprints is gonna fool an experienced tracker. And one of the counter tracking measures that we can employ uh, pretty effectively, regardless of the situation, is going to be cutting the corner or slipping the stream. When we're deploying this measure, we're gonna use some sort of a linear area. It could be a road, could be a stream. And as we're approaching this road, being intentional on leaving sign for what we're doing, we're going to begin to, to cut the corner to make it look like we're trying to save some time. Once we get onto that well-used path, against whether it was a road, a trail, we're gonna continue down that path with as much time as we can afford to spend on it before stopping and then turn around and moving back in the other direction. Now, after we've cut the corner, I wanna to continue to leave some ground sign and spore to help trick the, the tracking party into believing that I'm still working in that direction that I'm not trying to evade them. And after I've moved with as much time as I can afford to spend on this measure, I will stop and I will turn around and I will work back in the opposite direction, ensuring that I do not leave any sign. Right and team, it should go without saying, but if you believe that you're being tracked, you need to pay extreme close attention to your noise, light, and litter discipline. Right, we need to understand that during the daylight, the light discipline is a key and critical thing. Blending in with our environment the best that we can, employing whatever kind of, whatever kind of camouflage that we can, moving very slowly, not skylining ourselves, but using the military crest if we're having to move across a hill, making sure that everything is taped down and buttoned up to our bodies so that nothing is moving around, our water's full, or we're not leaving any trash or debris on the ground unless it's intentional in order to deceive that tracking party. Of course, there's some other measures that we can employ 
should the situation call for it. And in future videos, we'll continue to dig into this a little bit more. Tim, I know this is just a short conversation about some counter tracking operations and principles that you can put in your kit bag, but I hope that was time well spent. Again, make sure you leave some comments down below that we can continue to, to master our craft and sharpen each, each other up. I appreciate all you guys, man. You stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.